Sometimes in a molecular biology lab, you'll hear people that you think are lost and using a compass to try to find their direction. Uh, this is a blotting compass because a lot of the blots get their names from cardinal directions. So these are blots in molecular biology. Well, starting first with a southern blot. A southern blot is a sensitive method for detection of a DNA sequence within a mixture. The DNA is first cleaved or cut with restriction enzymes to produce fragments that can be separated by gel electrophoresis. After electrophoresis, DNA fragments are transferred to a nitrocellulose membrane by capillary action, creating a replica of the original gel. The membrane is incubated with a labeled probe which binds to and detects fragments of interest. So we have our DNA, we have our gel, run it through, we have this transfer step, we have this blotting step, and ultimately what we're left with is what looks like lines in a column. Uh, specifically, this is looking at DNA, and this is why it is the southern blotting technique. In contrast, we have the northern blotting technique. Uh, and this is a method for detection of specific mRNA in a mixture of RNAs, looking at specifically messenger RNA. And while it looks very similar um, to the southern blot we just saw, some lines in a column, this is looking at something very different. However, like southern blotting, this method is highly specific and sensitive. RNA from cells and tissues is extracted and separated by electrophoresis. As in southern blotting, RNA is transferred to a nitrocellulose membrane and incubated with a labeled probe that is complementary to the RNA. This method can be used to quantitate the transcription of RNA under different cellular conditions. So this is kind of a way to get the sense of the amount. And you can see kind of the end result located here for northern blotting looking at mRNA. Then there's also western blotting, which again has a very similar image if you just look at it. But western blotting is a laboratory method used to detect specific protein molecules among a mixture of proteins. This mixture can include all of the proteins associated with a particular tissue or cell type. Uh, Western blots can also be used to evaluate the size of the protein of interest and used to measure the, the amount of protein expression that's occurring. This procedure was named um, similarly to its previously invented method known as the southern blot, and that's why this one gets the term the western blot, looking at specific protein molecules. Now these three molecules can kind of like, or these three blind techniques, looking at three different molecules can kind of be compared here. You kind of get the idea of the southern uh, blotting in the first column, the middle column being northern, and the last column here being western blotting. And you can see how there's some similarities between them, but also some differences. The key part, looking at different um, identifying markers or molecules in this case, DNA, looking at RNA, and looking at proteins. Now I'm just going to mention here at the very end some other blots, because uh, those are the major ones, but there is, if you were wondering, there is an eastern blot, a far western blot, a southwestern, a reverse northern blot, and a dot blot as well. Um, so all these looking at very um, specific things, uh, all different blots, uh, southern, northern and western are by far the most common. Eastern blot is used for detection of post-transitional -trans -trans modifications of proteins. Far western is used, uses antibodies to detect the presence of protein-protein complexes. Uh, this southwestern blot is based off the southern blot, that's where it kind of gets part of its name from, used to identify characterizing DNA uh, binding proteins. Reverse northern blot uh, differs from both northern and southern blot in that the DNA is first immobilized in a blotting matrix, and then specific sequences are detected with labeled RNA probes. So you can see we get into some little bit uh, different protocols as far as the procedures to carry out. And lastly, the dot blot is a, a special case of any of the above blots where it does um, it now and allate these added directly to the blotting matrix. It appears as dots as opposed to separating the sample with electrophoresis prior to blotting. So that's one that is a little bit different. The rest definitely depend heavily on electrophoresis and separating things out in a gel before transferring them to another membrane. So again, this is just kind of that basic overview of all the different types of blots that may occur. Uh, and hopefully this makes a little bit more sense and you're not completely lost in the cardinal directions of molecular biology.